All right, so I saw there was a forum post on vessel detection in QPath. Um, hi everyone, I want to analyze host light images, uh, host light immunofluorescence scan, stain for vessels, protocolexin. For what I know, QPath is only able to detect cells, but not vessels with their route. With their route. Um, as a result, the vessels are shown very fragmented. The nuclei are detected with staining, only the route of the vessels. Does anyone know a script to display vessels and maybe measure their density differences within the tissue? Right, so vessels are a bit weird in that they are not confined to be in proximity to a, um, a what do you call it, nucleus. Um, they can span across multiple cells, and as a result, simple nucleus-based cell uh, segmentation and classification based on blood vessel uh, staining will not work so well and result in rather fragmented um, blood vessels. Instead, for cases like vessels and other stains that might exhibit more of a regional staining pattern, we're going to have to develop a different method for segmenting vessels. Specifically, I'm going to outline what I think are, in my opinion, one of the... Am I recording? Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, what are one of the uh, two main ways of segmenting vessels and calculating the latter part of your question, uh, density differences. So, first thing we need to do is get an image with vessels. Here I'm using imaging mass cytometry images, and now while they're technically not the same as fluorescence microscopy images, this is kind of what I have on hand. And much like a fluorescence microscopy image, you're, it's a single channel image where a single channel corresponds to a single stain. Brighter, inten brighter uh, higher intensity pixel values mean more staining. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to try is a thresholder, a pixel thresholder. The idea here is we want to threshold um, blood vessels using our blood vessel marker. So here we're doing full image resolution. Our resolution at most is only one micron per pixel. Channel is CD31. Pre-filter, Gaussian, a little bit of a blur. Um, and yeah, let's take a look and see how this uh, looks like. Let me actually... Uh, Delete all the previous stuff from my other work. The threshold is positive. Hmm. Why isn't it not uh, showing anything? Hmm. Anyways, um, huh. <laughs> so right off the bat, and also because I recorded this, but I forgot to include audio. Um, we can see that the parameters here are relatively reasonable. Maybe we can uh, add a little bit more of a Gaussian blur and bump up the threshold even more. Although I'm worried we're now starting to exclude. Um, maybe that's too much of a Gaussian blur. Anyways, the idea here is to classify a pixel as belonging to part of a blood vessel or not. So with, this settings, with these settings, it seems to be doing a relatively reasonable job. If we are relatively satisfied in the pixels that are being classified, and you don't have to worry about these small fragments, I'll show how to deal with them later, you can click Save. Sure. We can then create a... F um, a full image annotation, or whatever area we want to calculate vessel density in. Go to classify, load uh, pixel classifier. I think it was vessel detection, yeah. And click create objects. Now most important one of the most important things is to create detections as detections are immutable and the measurements will not be reflected in the parent roi in terms of number of vessels um, per area 
anything below this threshold we'll just toss it out as being noise or some other thing that we don't want to count as being a vessel. And this shows the minimum hole size. Anything, any uh, lumen areas of the vessel smaller than this will be filled. So this thing over here should be filled solid. And we split objects, so now we have individual vessels. We click OK. Um, and we can close that, and ta-da! We've segmented our vessels, at least better than what would have been done if we used the cell detection uh, algorithm. And yeah, as you can see, it's continuous, unlike what the, cell, the watershed cell detection algorithm would probably generate. Um, and in terms for answering the latter part of your question, measured or density differences, well, if you go to the annotations tab, you can see we have the area, we have the uh, number of detections, and thankfully it calculates for us the number of positive um, vessels per square millimeter. Now, the, the reason why these two values are the same is because this field of view, just by complete coincidence, happens to be one square millimeter. <laughs> but yeah, rest assured, um, this value is calculated by taking the number of detected blood vessels and dividing it by the total area of the um, annotation. So this is one approach to calculate blood vessels, assuming your image is relatively homogenous and you don't have a lot of variation in blood vessel staining. If you do, you might want to use a more machine learning approach, and that's where creating a pixel classifier would probably be a better approach. So let's first uh, delete all detections. Um, and let's start training the pixel classifier. We want to provide some cases of, you know, true blood vessel staining. So, um, oops, right, yeah, that should be fine. Um, so yeah, just keep on annotating a few vessels here and there. I could probably have done a better job there. Okay, let's uh, not worry about that too much. Yeah, just, you know, uh, label some vessels. All right, I'll uh, just do this manually. So if you can see, I have auto set enabled, meaning every single thing I'm drawing right now is being set to the class that I currently have highlighted. In this case, the class that I want to use for uh, blood vessels. All right, now we can give it some negative cases. So I'll just take a little bit of background here and there. Uh, unfortunately, these aren't the cleanest images and the resolution is only one micron per pixel, but you get the idea. And now that we have some negative classes, we can turn on live prediction. So this looks like absolute garbage, but the reason being is that the resolution isn't at the full image resolution. Now you can see it looks slightly less garbagey, but that's also because I'm currently processing all of the 22 different channels included in the IMC data set, which realistically we only need to use CD31 or any other um, markers that are associated with identifying our blood vessels. So if we uncheck all of those, maybe add a couple of scales here and there, add a little bit of features, press OK much better um all right now of course this can be further refined by including more than seven training cases from each of them um and by trying you know something like a random trees classifier who knows might be better it, or might not be um anyways it's more so just to show proof of concept and we'll call it vessels v2 save that and just as done before we can select our annotation go to uh, classify load pixel classifier vessel 
Oh, which one was it? I think it was this one. Create objects, current selection, detections. Same as before, press OK. And just like before, we can see the number of positive vessels per square millimeter. It's not going to be perfectly identical to what I showed previously with the um, single measurement pixel thresholder, just because they're it's comparing apples and oranges at this point, two completely different algorithms with un incomparable um, thresholds and parameters. But the idea here is you want to do some kind of quality correction, whether it be, you know, manually uh, counting the total number of vessels in a small region of interest and see if that lines up to what the classifier would generate. Um, but yeah, there's many ways to evaluate the accuracy of vessel uh, segmentation. In any sense, I hope this video was in some way, shape or form informative to you. Um, Gemina Y or Yasmin, and yeah, you know, KeyPath really is a very versatile program. So if there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> All right, take care.